Hello, my name is Jean and I am a knitter. My most recently finished project is the shawl that I had to block in two pieces because my blocking surface wasn't really long enough for all of it. And I can't even show you because I can't hold it out. It's got almost two meters across and I love it. But <clears throat> I have a little trouble because I tried a little test wear and puppy claws hook in lace like nobody's business. But knitting is fortunately forgivable and he pulled out a loop, but if you tug and tug and tug and tug and kind of encourage, it does go back. I found another quirk Thank you. And I fixed it and I can't even find it anymore. So I'm not gonna worry about it. I had dropped a stitch and when I found it, I put a split ring stitch marker in and you know, the little safety pin kind of thing. Pinned it, finished blocking it. Then I could find my stitch because it was hooked on the marker. And then I just took, this is all that I had left over of that color, full skein. And I just needed about that much, and I worked it back in and then buried the end, both ends, because I, you go through the slip stitch and pretend it's not slipped. This is all I've got left of the pale green, and this is all I've got of the color that's up by the neck. I haven't weighed them, but they're really not enough to do much, but maybe put a trim on a sock or something like that. And that is what I am knitting next. No, I already had one partly done. I had stopped so I could finish it. I am not that fast a knitter. But, ta-da, one sock. No, I don't have second sock syndrome and I had never even heard of it before that. So, this is sock two. I, I have never in my life knit a toe up sock. I'm not sure I could. I just, my brain does not wrap around the not heel flap thing. I don't know how you do a heel flap on a toe up sock. And my brain cannot comprehend it. But <clears throat> cuff down, I got it. I got it. Um, I used to knit socks on four needles, not five, but I used an Elizabeth Zimmerman sock pattern for many a pair of socks that I actually knit while I was riding the DC Metro to and from work. And one week of commuting, because I had a distance to go and even had to change trains, one week of commuting, and yes, I can knit and walk, and walk fast, aha got me one pair of socks and nobody crowded me on the metro with all these needles flying. <laughs> that was fun. But what I do when I knit a cuff down sock is I use this sock ruler. See if I can get it to show up well. I don't know. But <clears throat> it has been patented, actually. And if you go to www.sockruler.com, you can get one for yourself. What you do is you put your heel here, just like you would in a shoe foot measuring thing. And you figure out about where your toe decreases are going to start. And for me, it is about seven and a half inches. So, I put the, because this is unfinished, I just slide it in. And when my knitting measures seven and a half from the heel down, I start my toe decreases. And, I have to prove this. It's just fine. Perfectly. 
And it really doesn't matter what style toe I use. There's many different decreases you can do. Um, I wasn't a good girl and there's a little, a little nip in my Kitchener stitch, um, but I um, don't really worry about that too much because they're socks. And they don't have to be perfect, they have to be finished. I don't use a fancy, stretchy cast on. I just make sure it's fairly loose because it's got enough stitches. This is a standard 64 stitch sock for me and it divides nicely. Um, turning the heel is not a big deal. Um, you just have to remember to go back and forth and then decrease and then the, there'll be a little hole and that tells you when you need to do the decrease next and when you have no stitches left, you're done. And I did what they call an eye of partridge heel, which is where you are making a denser area for the heel. Now this cracks me up because that's not where my heels wear out in my socks. My heels wear out under the heel of my foot, not at the back of the heel of my foot. So I've never understood why people make a thick area there, but I did because it helped me keep count. Um, but the pattern has you uh, put in a little area of garter stitch, three stitches of garter stitch, on each side of your eye of partridge, which is pretty common, um, and it helps set things off. But because they did weird things to the pattern, sometimes you're doing a pearl garter stitch and sometimes you're doing a knit garter stitch. So a pearl garter stitch is just like knit every row, only you just purl every row. Well, it works because you start by when you're knitting across to start the garter stitch you start your row by purling and then you end by knitting so that it's even i think i would start by purling both sides i don't know why they had me knit at the beginning and purl at the end on one side and purl at the beginning and knit at the end on the other side. It works, but it doesn't actually define your rows perfectly. It defines them a half a row off. But now that I'm thinking about it, it might correct at the other side so that you're a half a row off at the start and you're a half a row off at the end because of how you turn your heel. So that would make it even. Yeah, it would. But that's what I'm doing right now. I am knitting socks and not using up the tiny amount of scrap yarn I have left from my shawl. I'll probably use it in, um, probably not use this, there's not enough. But this and this could be um, heels and toes, not, yeah, I could do a heel on one or I could do a cuff and a toe on a sock. But because of the way I do my heels, eh, maybe I could, but I'm not gonna really worry about it. Um, as you can see, I have a lot of books and, um, I'll look up a pattern. My next pair of socks is going to be toe up. It will be a challenge. I've never done it before. I'll let you know how it goes. In the meantime, just keep knitting.